In the planning stage, media technology played a vital role that enabled me to collect and present my research. Microsoft Word was used to write up drafts and its spell check feature was useful to make sure that my spelling and grammar was correct. The vast majority of information came from the internet, which was used to find specific details on topics such as poster and magazine conventions. Google proved to be particularly useful as it allowed me to gather images that would be used to visually represent my text. Once these specific tasks were completed, I uploaded them to WordPress, a blog website, where I saved and displayed all of my work and research tasks to one place. I hand drew my trailer storyboard and used a digital scanner to upload the story sequence for the blog. For certain tasks such as my mood board, magazine, poster flat plan and genre research pages, I used Adobe Photoshop to create the layout and to present my work. As this is software I feel comfortable with, it was an obvious choice to use. Another piece of software that I used was Prezi, a slideshow creator that was used to clearly show and present different areas of study. Furthermore, I used YouTube to research existing thriller genre trailers that I later analysed. When making my questionnaire, Microsoft Excel was used to create the pie charts to display the results. When constructing my magazine and poster, a digital SLR camera was used to capture stills of my actors being represented on my media products. Studio lighting was used to intensify the magazine cover's image, whereas natural ambient lighting was used for my poster's images. Both my magazine and poster were created using Adobe Photoshop. Photoshop was useful as it allowed me to resize the images. Adobe Photoshop was also used to enhance the image's clarity and bring out detail. A tool that I found extremely useful was the Brightness and Contrast tool. This allowed me to create a stronger image that would stand out due to its boosted clarity and captures the viewer's attention. Another tool that I found useful was Smart Sharpen. This was used to further bring out detail in my images and help to define other key features. On my poster I used layer masks. The first one was a black and white layer mask that allowed me to brush in or out colour. This allowed me to leave important areas such as the actor and gun in colour, whilst leaving other unimportant sections of the image in grayscale. The second layer mask was used to bring through the bruised image on the layer behind. As there was a difference in skin tone, the selective colour tool was used to correctly match the skin colours. Photoshop's text box feature was also useful for individually placing and moving text such as my cover lines and billing blocks. I used the font.com to find and install a suitable typeface for my film title. Using the quick selection tool, I selected my text, clicked on the metallic texture layer and created a new layer, giving my font a shiny, more professional appearance. To create my magazine boost, I used the shape tool and inserted a circle shape onto my magazine. Whilst making my film trailer, I used a digital SLR camera to film my individual shots. I chose to use this specific camera as it has a high quality image capture and a better quality lens than a handheld camcorder. The manual focus mode also enabled me to use shots such as a pull focus as well as adjusting the depth of field of my shots. To record better quality audio, I used an external microphone which drastically improved the clarity of my audio recording. For some shots, a tripod was used to keep the frame still. The internet was useful to source props to be included in my trailer. For shots such as the police car and the gunshots, I used sound effects that I gathered from internet websites that were overlaid onto the original footage. Sound synchronisation was critical for the gunshots and other sound effects looked unrealistic if the sound did not coincide exactly. Moving the sound effects on Adobe Premiere Pro's timeline made this task easy. I used Cinema 4D to reduce the animation of the Ransom logo. This software was complicated but had very long rendering times. The process took a long time but the perseverance enabled me to produce a very effective result. I used many technical procedures during the making of the trailer. Green screen overlays were used to create the point of view camcorder shot and recording icon on the video camera view. I found the green screen shots had patches of green in them. I solved this by editing in Adobe Premiere rather than Final Cut. This proved very successful. 
However, adding gun flashes and explosions using the same technique looks unrealistic. And as the shot looked good without them, I decided to remove them from the final trailer. For the soundtrack of my trailer, I searched on YouTube and eventually found one that I thought perfectly matched my needs. The music I selected gradually increases in pace and volume and matched the footage of my storyboard. For my low angle shots, I used a camera handle that allowed the camera to stay low to the ground and stable at the same time. Finally, I gathered all of my film trailer material and imported the files into Adobe Premiere Pro. I used Adobe Premiere Pro to edit, assemble footage, crop, colour correct and adjust the brightness and contrast of individual clips. Premiere Pro is also used to add video transitions between the clips. To do this, I used a pen tool to create fades, allowing me to select the length and placement 